Last week, I finished Forspoken. I beat the game in under 20 hours, and I gave myself plenty of time to explore, to dive into the world, do some side quests, do some delves, do some dungeons, and so much more. And honestly, I loved it. I loved my experience with it, but that got a lot of y'all asking the question, how do you love a game that was so universally hated by every corner of the globe? It destroyed the studio. I'm sure there's dozens of you guys. And I thought I'd like to talk about that today, but there's another bigger context going on here, a mini rant, if you will, at the state of Square Enix because they lost their damn minds when it comes to the studio. Everything that they have been doing over the last couple of years, with, with the exception of 14, but we will jump into that. Cole Evix kind of tweets this out. We'll talk about Cole's tweet here in a bit because in the context of Square Enix, in a way, having the gall to say that for Spoken Underperformed, it has my mind being boggled because it's a brand new IP with under 20 hours of gameplay. And what were they expecting? And this also ties into many of their releases. It seems like Square Enix releases outside of Final Fantasy 14 have continually been underperforming. And so I want to talk to you guys about it today. I do want to put out a series. I have been thinking about doing this with the question of what is it worth? So we might address some of that with Forspoken in today's video because I am a little bit frustrated by the news today. I am a little bit frustrated by Square Enix's continual, continual, I guess, being flabbergasted at its lack of performance in its games. But I do want to talk to you guys specifically and we'll open up with why I actually enjoyed Forspoken. I do wish and I do think it could be better, and I, but I do love these games. I do really enjoy the story and the world of Forspoken, and I know the character got to a lot of people. I know her, like, I, I saw a lot of people really writing off, uh, you know, uh, writing her off. I can't even remember her name, Faye. <laughs> Frey, there we go. I don't know why that just drew a blank in my name, but we're going to keep it into the post. We're not going to edit that out. We're just going to roll with it because that's why you guys, I guess, like my videos. Who knows? Um, at its core, uh, why I actually connected with Frey, uh, the key aspect for me one of the things that i was really surprised by is her abandonment issues her anger issues these are things that i kind of related to in uh, an indirect way like I'm, if you've never heard my stories and and know my story my mom was abandoned by her dad and my dad's mom unfortunately like she passed away from cancer at a young age like my whole life i've been dealing with parents who've had that struggle in their life and i feel blessed because my parents have been there and not everybody's that lucky i always kind of say there are no illegitimate children there's just illegitimate parents and if you ever have never heard that and you've had some struggles in your life with your parents like hopefully that is is a good thing to hear because you can clearly see the thing that i see in in fray is that anger she's 21 so she's an idiot uh you know like i was an idiot at 21 if you're 21 chances are you might not know you're an idiot yet but you're gonna wake up to that and some point you're gonna look back and be like man that was not a good choice but you don't really have a choice it's a part of the growing up process and so you have this girl this young woman who is a part of new york it's life is hard uh like she's been you know like had a struggle her whole life dealing with the fact that she felt unwanted and unloved uh, for so long and that anger has a has a way in my mind of permeating your DNA and that's something that can rub people off in the wrong way because here you are also in the contrast of a fantasy land this beautiful aspect and so a part of me as a player sometimes I like to get away and experience that so when you get disconnected from that I think there obviously is that that parallel that that structural narrative of the character in this beautiful land but then also things are going wrong here in this land and yet if i could say this hands down like if i put myself into her position i don't it doesn't make sense right like i don't understand why she wants to get back to new york but that's me putting myself into that position i think that overall that's something that she's still trying to figure out for herself because for her new york is the only thing that she's ever known and then there's that frustration and obviously angst that comes along with it so i know a lot of people memed on the dialogue and things like that i thought it was great i enjoyed my time with it uh and then essentially it comes down to the fact that easily beat it under uh 20 hours i think if i was trying to speed run this i i wonder if i could get it under 10. 
I do. I, I you know, skipping cutscenes, just plowing ahead. And then that begs the question, what is going on with Square Enix, right? Like when it comes down to it, it didn't perform as well as we'd like. I said this right when the game came out. I don't feel like it was a $70 game because I kind of contrasted to the $40 that I've put into New World and easily over 700 hours at this point and more. Like that's going to continue to go up. Obviously, games as a service is a different kind of category, but in terms of cost, this just seems like a big ask. It's a brand new IP. It does not have any, which is a strength because you don't have any preconceived notions. Yoshi P talked about Final Fantasy 16 in the same way, but it, it can be then considered this frustration that I have is that they're asking a lot. PS5, high-end PC, not supporting GeForce Now, which is a huge mistake by Square Enix that continues to be a mistake by Square Enix. And I don't know what will change Square Enix's mind about GeForce now because I'm still buying those games on Steam. So the pricing is all wrong. So the question ends up being like, what is this game worth? I would say if you can get it at $20, like it's a good game. It's a great game for 20 bucks. It's not the what the $70 that you should be worried about spending on it. The studio in and of itself is being absorbed. I think that's the right call. And that brings me to what they're saying. Like Square Enix says, and sales have been lackluster while the performance of the new titles with February and March release dates will be the ultimate determinant. We're going to see considerable downside risk of our uh, first uh, fiscal year 2023 third quarter earnings. A month after Forspoken's released, it was announced by developer Luminous Productions that they're going to be fully merged into Square Enix this May. Like, it's unfortunate that that's the case. Obviously, the CEO is also getting replaced. I believe that to hopefully be a good thing. But this kind of has to kind of put a bow on it because this isn't really truly a review. Ideally, we can hopefully see a better firm, a firm of Square Enix uh, going forward, but that's going to take a little bit of time. Cole puts this out. He says, take everything and invest it into Final Fantasy 14. I cannot understand why they are doubling, tripling, quadrupling down on 14. Why aren't they? Uh, yesterday, I spoke about a distinct lack of content, and this is causing people to unsub. Stop squandering your amazing opportunity. Invest in Final Fantasy 14. I think they honestly should invest in something beyond Final Fantasy 14 as a game as a service from a technological perspective, because I don't think what they've built with Final Fantasy 14 can, you know, can be shifted into such a degree that would make everybody happy. Uh, I think they've built out 14 as this uh, every two years, here's your Final Fantasy game, uh, which is what the Final Fantasy series truly needs. But I haven't seen them able to take a lot of risks. I talked about that. And the reason why I left Final Fantasy 14, a lot of people didn't agree with me. A lot of people agree with me now. And that's just a function of time because I call it how I see it. And thank goodness. I love you guys so much for your support and watching these videos, because at the end of the day, I am not subject to telling you guys lies to, to put it all into you. But why aren't they investing more in Final Fantasy 14? I think the answer is 16. I think essentially when it comes to the company, that's where I think they've lost their dad minds. Like if this has been something I've been feeling and it's been building up over and over again, year over year over year. And you just see them again, talking about these things that people just don't care about. Uh, I don't think they're going to get rid of the NFT project, but I do. <laughs> I do think it's going to be very interesting. A case study. If there was ever a case study within gaming and game development, I think Square Enix has been coasting on Final Fantasy 14, but I feel like I just get this vibe that there's just a lot of terminal oil behind the scenes, things we just don't see. Decisions being made, um, game books and plans and all these things putting into, into practice. And my hope is with this, with Forspoken and with this, uh, the studio Luminous Productions being absorbed is that it does get the resources into the projects that need them and that people are actually asking and wanting. But there's a bigger concern here. And I do wonder if Game Pass and PlayStation Plus and all that has had a negative impact on these style of games because they feel like they should be able to push them out for $70. But Forspoken is an absolute PlayStation Now game game pass game. And that is essentially kind of the model that we live in. If you don't believe me, just take a moment to look at your Netflix or your Disney plus subscription queue, then go look at what's actually performing well in the theaters. We've seen a massive shift into the streaming technologies into the subscription services where these things, I think, end up in your mind, in the back of your mind, you're probably just going, oh, maybe I'll wait until it comes out on PlayStation Now or, or Game Pass, right? And that impacts sales and that is a whole thing. And then some companies are still, I think, holding on to this old mindset. And the question is, is will we get these kind of games going forward? And I don't know the answer to that. I don't. And 
I hope the answer is yes. And I, I do feel like we're getting a lot of really good stuff in terms of streaming content, I, you know, from a like a con consumption perspective there. I think gaming in, is in this weird position, this amalgamation of will they or won't they. And so Square Enix in and of itself, I think is trying to double dip into a degree. But then when they come out and say this BS in my mind of, oh, we were really kind of shocked with its low performance. They say that a lot. They say that a lot. And at the end of the day, it just, I, I don't know. I don't believe them anymore. I don't believe them anymore. And back to Cole's tweet, back to all of this. It's like, come on guys. <laughs> Why aren't you investing more in Final Fantasy 14? Why aren't you? Do it. I think that would be really good for you as a company. I, I, I don't know if they can or if they know how or if that investment, you know, if they're if they're too busy with NFTs. Like, honestly, the, the only way that I get re any resolution is to wait and see. And that's kind of a bummer. But you guys can hopefully entertain me with some of your thoughts because I'd love to hear your opinions about this. I do think for I really enjoyed my time with Forspoken. I really, based off of my life and my history, I thought it was fun. It was a fun game. I enjoyed it. It wasn't worth $70, but I knew that going in. I just wanted to play it. I was excited for it. I've been looking forward to it since they announced it. And I'm, I don't regret spending my $70 at all. I don't regret actually beating this game at all. And I'm looking forward to now going and playing Hogwarts because that's also a game that came out and, you know, I want to play it. And I played the opening mission and it was really good. Like there's definitely, you can definitely feel a quality difference uh, from A to B, but yeah anyway that that's another video for another subject for another day and uh thanks to you if you guys made it all the way to the end start off with the 12 minute club in the uh in the comments so i know that you made it to the end of this video and i love you guys so much thanks for your time today hopefully i'll see you in the next video but until then take care